Hey everyone, the artificial trainer here. Welcome in, welcome back to my channel. Vase for Juan 2.2 is out. We were all waiting for it, it's here. Let's jump in and I'm gonna show you how we can use it. Before everyone gets all their hopes up, you're probably seeing the intro play right now. It's not the best model I've used. There's tons of applications where Vase is still the better product. If we go to the hugging face, you can see this was actually made by the Juan Fun team, not by the Vase team. So it's a slightly different model, same architecture, but it's probably trained on a different data set, which is why we get some different functionality from what we get with the original Vase. But this model does do some things really, really well that no model has been able to do before. So we're going to jump in. Before we do that, like and subscribe. I'm gonna have tons of tons more content coming on Vase applications, use use cases for it. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you don't miss any news. So in the attachments, I provided a bunch of artifacts for you. There's four workflows. There's a workflow for the wrapper and for native. There's also four images for you to play with. And there's a video as well for you to follow along with as we go through this. So th I think the big, workflow that everyone wants, right, is that control net workflow, like a realistic looking control net workflow. And this is not better than Vase. I'm going to show you that workflow, but um, even using the full version without any light X to V LoRa's, I don't think it's better than Vase for 2.1. But let's go through the model downloads before we get into the workflow. So there are a lot of models for this video. Uh, I'd recommend kind of watching the video, understanding what all the models are used for, and then decide what you want to go after. So I have models for the native workflow. This uses the models straight from the Vase Fun repo. The ones in the Hugging Face work automatically for Comfy UI. There's also the wrapper workflow, which the wrapper gives you more control, but it's a bit more cumbersome. There's a lot more nodes. It's a bit more chaotic uh, in the best way. So. If you want to use the wrapper nodes, then make sure you download these files. And then I also provided a Quen control net workflow. I'm going to use that for my control net when modifying my first frame. If you don't want to use a control net and you just want to try to use a reference image, then you don't need this, but I'd recommend trying it out if you haven't used Quen before. Last thing to note on the wrapper files, I am using the scaled files and they're in the E4M3FN format. If you're using a 30 series graphics card or earlier, you're gonna wanna go to the same repo, but download the E5 version instead. I believe the E4 only works on 4,000 4, series and, and greater. All right, so if you're somewhat new to, to this comfy stuff, the way you read this models model downloads is so comfy UI is your home folder so comfy UI and then it says to go to models so for example for the diffusion models go to models and then diffusion models and then you can you'll be able to see my one two two fun vase model in here so there it is so you're just going to want to follow along like that for all of the files that you want to download and then i'll see you back here at the end. And if you could leave the video running while you download models, really appreciate it. Models are huge. They take a long time to download. Leaving the video running helps helps me out, helps support the channel and helps me create more content for all of you. All right. So the first one we're going to go through is the 122 Fun Vase Native 8 Step. I'm not going to go through the regular native because that one takes a while to run, but go ahead and try it. Um, I, I didn't find that the quality is so much better than the eight step. And we'll talk about quality as we go through the generations. There's some things that this model is really good at and some things that it's not good at. All right, so let's download the eight step and we'll drag it in. And for these demos, I'm going to generate at 832 by 480. Feel free to push it up to 1280 by 720 if you'd like. And the first use case we'll do is DW pose. So I have this woman jogging and I have DW pose estimator here. So the first thing we'll need to do is get the first frame from that jogging video. So I'm just gonna save the video for easy access. And then we'll do a load video upload. And then I need to grab the first frame. So I'm just gonna do a select images. I'm gonna resize it to 1280 by 720. 
720. You could have also just forced the frame load cap to one, both work. And then I'll just do a preview image and save that off on my own. All right, so there's our first frame. Save that. And then I want to do a Quen Union control net next. So I'm using the diff synth Laura here control net. There's also an instant X control net, which probably works a little bit better, but nevertheless, drag that in there. I'm just going to change the sampler to DPM PPSDE and the scheduler to beta. A man with a wolf head running. So there's our person. Doesn't line up perfectly, but for vase, that's okay. And now the thing that vase 2.2 is supposed to give us is a little bit more motion. So I'm hoping that maybe we can get this bear to chase the person in the background. All right, so if we go back to our eight step workflow, we already have our video in here and we can drag in that new reference image. And then I do have some background backgrounds remover stuff set up, but I'm not going to use that in this case for right now. I'm just going to drag straight off of the resize image into the reference image. Okay, and then we're just going to do 41 frames at 480p just to give you an example. And then we'll run a couple other examples. I'll show you to mo how to modify the workflow and then we'll go through the wrapper. All right. So this is definitely the best use case of vase with pose control is when you have a background that you want to animate. Vase in 2.1 was very, you know, stagnant with backgrounds unless the unless the control had a movement in the background as well like a crowd of people in the background or something. But in this case, it's it gets the pose of the subject, but you also get the movement in the background of the bear. So that's an awesome use case for this model that probably not a lot of other models could do well and consistently. All right, so the next use case here is if we do pose control, but we remove the background. So we can see we have just the bear and the, and the wolf man as our background. So let's, the only thing you need to do is so remove the control video and the control masks. And then we're just going to drag from the image processing, processing resize image to drag. That's the control video. And then from the image remove background node, drag that to the reference image. So that's going to give us the control video without a reference first frame. And it's going to give us the reference, which has the, this white background. And we're going to be able to fill in the white background with whatever we want. So I think I'm going to have them running through like a, a snowy tundra or something like that. Sorry, I made a small mistake there. We don't want to drag off the image, image remove background. We want to drag off the image composite masked. The remove background has an alpha in it, which looks like black. So we're, we recomposited it onto a white background, which is what we want. All right. So I, I guess the snow was a bit too similar to white. So it didn't give us the snowy tundra. Maybe let's try a city street in the prompt instead. All right. So there's that one. And we get some weird stuff happening in this. I, it might just not like this reference image that much. You can see the control net leaking through a little bit here, but this is where I, I've found that vase fun struggles the most is with this pose, which is why I wanted to show this example to you guys. Um, but we do still get good movement from the bear. There is a city, even though it's not a great city. And I'm realizing I messed up the prompt and I said it was a snowy city. So it's, it actually did follow the prompt pretty well. <laughs> okay. So now the last thing I want to show you in this native workflow is not having any control net. Cause I think that this is where it, the model really shines. So if you just ha show a composited, I'm going to bypass all of these. And I have a composited file. I have a couple of composited files that I attached to the Patreon post, but you can also just make your own. So I liked this one. I liked some of the results I was getting from this one. So if we bring that in, and so we're gonna have like the superhero guy, hero guy flying and then this wolf we bring that in and then we drag this in just as a reference image or and we remove the control video and then we have to bring out the width and height as well that got bypassed and then make sure that we are dragging 
the width and the height up to the vase conditioner. And then set your length to be whatever you want. I'm gonna go with 61 frames here. So all we have is the reference image connected, which is this image with some white space. And I'm going to prompt for like a superhero movie. So a man with a wolf head bounds down the sh or runs down the street and leaps while a blue glowing man flies ahead. The camera dollies out to show the chaotic action scene. Okay, so this is a prompt that any of the Wand 2.1 models would have struggled with because they just didn't have that much dynamic movement. So I'm expecting to be able to get some really good movement in this. It might not be the best quality, but like this is kind of, you know, where we were six months ago on slow motion videos, you know, we even slow motion videos were crappy. Now we have good slow motion videos, but we're still working on high motion. I think this does high motion reference probably the best of any model that we have yet. So there's your potential use case for this model. That's where I really see this one shine. I, I know that the motion is like chaotic and crazy, but I could definitely see some like really artistic generations coming out of this and it's really the only model that can take a reference and do like crazy fast motion like this all right so last thing we'll do is check out the wrapper version of this basically the same laura setup just transfer between native and wrapper now uh, this is based on kj's wrapper workflow and i just cleaned it up a little bit and then he was using a gray mask, I used a, an open pose or DW pose control instead. So just make sure you got all your models in the right places. Um, you sh if you downloaded all the ones from my links, you shouldn't have to adjust anything as long as everything's in the correct spot. And I did turn the block swap up pretty high. If you need to go up to 40, you can. It actually sometimes hurts you to go too high because then your RAM gets uh, out of whack. So you'll have to play around with this block swap because increasing the block swap also increases your RAM consumption, but it decreases your VRAM consumption. So sometimes there's a balance. All right, and I'm just gonna do a 21 frame generation here because there's no there's no reason for us to uh, go crazy. I already showed you the, the main parts of the workflow in the native one. And if you wanna incorporate the reference image part from the native workflow, it's really just this, um, these, blocks that you need the first frame with the resize and then the reference image you can bring those over here and you should be able to figure out you know all you need to do is plug your reference image in here and remove the input frames from your uh because you're not using a control video and the place where i defined my frame count was right here so the frame load cap i said let's only use 21 and then the place where i resized the video was right here. So I said I only want to use 832 by 480. So just adjust those as needed. If it's portrait, adjust your height and width. If you want a longer video, increase your frame load cap. I would guess that this also has the same 81 frame limit. I haven't tested it. You might be able to stretch it a little bit past 81 frames, but all right. And here, similar issues, right? Like it's, it's just not as good as vase at uh, this type of thing. All right, so a couple of things I haven't explored yet. I did some very minimal gray masking, so like paint outs, things like that. First glance doesn't look as good as one 2.1, but I'm gonna check it out some more. I'm injecting frames in, in the middle of a generation. So say you have an 81 frame video, you wanna say, I know exactly what frame 41 looks like. We can do that with vase, but I haven't checked it out yet. So we'll check that out as well. So follow along, hit the subscribe button for more of that AI content coming. Join the Discord if you want to join a community passionate about, you know, using AI in professional use cases. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll talk to you again in the next one.